Shalom and welcome to Chinuch Bedarke Noam Insights and Attitudes towards Chinuch. The parsha in the beginning of Etchanan discusses Moshe's criticism of the Jewish people, B'nai Israel. He says to them that you weaken me when you ask me to give over the Aseret Divrot and not Hashem. Rashi explains that they should have had the strength to listen directly to Hashem. What is a chut? What an honor. Hashem is revealing himself, so to speak, to the Jewish nation. And instead of going ahead and dealing with it, it wasn't a simple moment, but what is a chut? Gather the strength, galvanize all your energy, and focus on the uh, nevoah from Hashem. Instead, he said, no, it was too much. You backed off, you asked me to take over. What a shame. But then the Pasuk afterwards says, that Hashem told Moshe it was right, the request was legitimate, meaning it really was too much, and the Ramban says that it was just very, very hard. They thought that uh, they're going to die, and it was only through a miracle that they could survive such a phenomena, and they didn't know if they were, Hashem would perform such a miracle for them. So therefore said, Moshe, please, it's just too much. I think there's an amazing Chinuch point over here in Pashat Bet Hanan. Moshe Rabbeinu, the ultimate Rebbe, gives Musa to the people. He thought they were being lazy, they weren't pushing themselves enough, and he says, you can do it. And if you push enough, you can hear the Torah directly from Hashem. Do not accept a substitute. Even me, Moshe Rabbeinu, go right to the source. And he thought they could do it, and they were just weren't pushing themselves. And God, who of course... Maven Kolev, he understands people better than anyone. He says, no, they really objectively could not do it. It wasn't laziness. It wasn't a lack of effort. It was just truly overwhelming. To me, this brings up one of the most fundamental questions in all of Chinuch. Every person, every teacher, every Rebbe, every parent wants and must put to push his student, his child, to reach the potential and not to settle for anything less. And they're going to push them to keep working on the midah, keep working on the learning, and learning more hours, going to minyan, involved in chesed. And the child goes ahead and learns during the break, a couple of hours a day. So maybe that's amazing. Just be happy with that. And shouldn't learn anymore. It should be too much. It needs to air out. Or maybe you could do more. Person, uh, child is not exactly uh, great with minyan. So you push him to do more, you have to come to Minion on time, down with Kavana, straight through to the end of the Minion. Don't leave early. You have a big test the next day, Gemara test, Mishta test, Chomish, whatever it may be. You have to learn, you have to really know your stuff well. Child says, it's just too much, I already studied for I can't do anymore. The parent says, when do you can't do anymore? You, you, we went over them, so you don't know, you have not mastered it yet. Another half hour, another hour. So the parent pushes and pushes and pushes the child. And here is the ultimate question. When do we say the child is just being lazy and therefore the parent needs to push and the teacher needs to push? And when do we say he reached his limit? He cannot do any more. So when it comes to Moshe and God, Moshe made his assessment that people really could do more and God says no. They really can't. They're not being lazy. Well, we don't have that luxury. The Rebbe's, the teachers, the parents don't have that luxury of God telling us, you've pushed too much, no more. So without that divine insight, what do we do? What do the parents and teachers and Rebbe's do? So you might say, well, in the state of Safek, in the state of doubt, I'll be machmi, I'll be stringent. Well, what does that mean? Stringent which way? I'll be stringent, that I'm, I'm going to take it easy on my student, on my child. I don't want to push too much. You know, it's a few minutes for the, uh, you did a little Hazara tonight, great. You don't really know the material so well. Okay, it's fine. On the vacation, you yeah, took off, you didn't go to Minion so much, you went for Minion for a few minutes, oh, it's fine. Is that being Machmir? You're being stringent? Maybe you're shortchanging your child. Maybe you're shortchanging your student. Oh, you're right. That's that's not that's not the approach. So I'll be machmer the other way. I'm gonna push. I'm gonna push. 
to make sure another review. He's at Minyan. He stays through the whole Dovin. He sits through the whole Shabbos table. She sits through the whole ta- Shabbos table. Two will finish with the Diffrey Torah and the singing and the benching. I'll be machmer that way. Maybe the child's not up to that either. And you'll be pushing him over the edge. So what do I do? Hashem corrected Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't have the total understanding of exactly what the level is. And Hashem corrected him. How do we know what the level is? So we don't. We can't be stringent this way or that way. There's no stringency here. There's no suffix the right of the in either direction. What do I do? All we could do is the way I understand it is we have to assess our child, our students' abilities to the best possible manner in a clear, rational, objective manner. What is his potential? What is her potential? How much can he do in this situation? And we have to make sure that we're truly assessing the child, we're not assessing ourselves. And if the child goes ahead and goes to Minyan and sits for part of the time and leaves early, we have to assess, is that really where the child is at? Not, how does it look for me? It's embarrassing for me. No, 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 that is not part of the equation. What is the child's potential? Could he do more? He's being lazy. Maybe I should push him. Not, I think he, he got him enough. What his level is at right now? Wish him a yashiko. You did great. Charles, go ahead. Not getting up for me at all during the vacation. You assess the child. That's it. And the fact that you go to shul alone and he's not with you, that's not part of the equation. What's best for the child? How much learning? How much chesed? How much davening? Whatever it is, all you can do is you work, the husband, the wife, the parents, together with the rebbies, with the teachers, with everyone involved, and any rebbies, a person's own rav, to try to assess objectively as possible, where is this child at? And you try to push him exactly to the degree that you think is right for that child. We don't have Hashem telling us like you tell Moshe. We can ask for Siyat HaDishmaya. We must ask for Siyat HaDishmaya. We need Hashem's help. But down here, we must try to go ahead and assess the child to the best of our abilities and push him exactly, Bidarke Noam, to that level so that he can achieve his potential. And in Yitz Hashem, if we really work at truly, truly assessing our students and our children, and we do it in an objective manner, and nothing to do with our pride, we're just thinking about the child of a student, then, in Yitz Hashem, we should be blessed with Siyat Deshmaya to hit it on the mark and to push the child to reach his maximal potential. Shalom.